So thanks everyone for coming. And thank you to Sean for um, organizing the event. Um, so this uh, seminar is part of the, the seminar series for politics and sociology. Um, and we have been running events over the last few years, focusing primarily on sort of current research on the topic of policy and sociology in relation to the seas region. So I'm very happy to <laughs> hold, um, hand over to Sean, who will be chairing. Uh, the okay, great. Thanks, Nicola. So I'm um, Sean Hanley. I'm uh, Associate Professor in Comparative Central and East European Politics, and, and I'll chair this, this session. And today we're delighted to welcome uh, Dr. Agnieszka Kwiatowska from uh, SWPS University in, in Warsaw, um, who will be talking about something which has uh, intrigued many of us for, for years, which is the um, position of green parties in, in, in Central and, and Eastern Europe. Um, on the whole, they are conspicuous by their absence and conspicuous by their weakness compared to Western Europe, and also not quite what many people expect necessarily of a Green Party if they are familiar and coming from West European politics. And Agnieszka will be talking about the recent uh, electoral success of the Polish uh, Green Party, uh, where there's quite an intriguing story to tell, I think. So Agnieszka, if you'd like to, um, if you'd like to take the floor. Okay, thank you. Uh, well, I'll be talking uh, about uh, the success of the uh, Polish uh, Green Party, although the word success is quite a large word for uh, having three seats in the parliament, but it's the first seats uh, they have, so for them it's definitely uh, the success. Uh, and uh, yes, that is, it, it was mentioned, uh, the Green Parties from Central and Eastern Western Europe um, differs both programmatically and uh, when it comes to electoral successes. Uh, and especially the difference uh, is seen in those parties that was created uh, in the first wave, um, so in the 90s uh, and um, in the 80s and 90s of last century. Uh, so uh, about the um, time when the um, democratic transition took uh, place in Central and Eastern Europe. Uh, so, uh, the of course, in all of this, uh, or at least in many countries, uh, there existed state-sponsored uh, so-called environmentalist organization, uh, for which uh, in some, mm, sorry, in, in, in some uh, cases, uh, people yeah, could belong, but their impact on the government policies were uh, minimal. It was just uh, a uh, the government trying uh, to uh, economize on this issue. So when the actual uh, new social movements emerged in the 80s, uh, they usually uh, place themselves uh, on the opposite side than the communist government. And therefore, as the whole uh, democratic opposition, uh, they mix together environmentalism uh, with the anti-communist uh, demands and uh, usually center and wing, right wing uh, postulates. Uh, and uh, of course, at the beginning, it was very dangerous to just um, attack the government openly. So both the uh, environmental activists uh, stated that they do not attack the communist policies, but uh, only its fail failings, uh, but also uh, the anti anti-communist um, activists joined environmental movements uh, in many countries, in Poland, in Czech Republic, in Czechoslovakia, then uh, in Baltic states, uh, to be able to uh, fight the government uh, with that, uh, well, the official uh, name of um, anti-communism. So they used environmentalism uh, as some uh, back cover way to attack the government. Uh, and so therefore, uh, it was a beginning on environmental parties' uh, successes in the uh, 90s as uh, they, um, was, uh, they were in, uh, included in the broad anti-communist uh, opposition uh, coalitions, uh, so-called umbrella uh, anti-communist opposition, and 
uh, yeah, they, they were able to obtain the first seats uh, in Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia, Czech Republic, Slovakia, and in Poland. Although in Poland, not in the first election, but uh, in the second and few uh, uh, next following elections. Uh, however, this first wave uh, quickly lost its relevance because, uh, well, mostly because this white anti-communist coalition crumbles as their main, main opponent was uh, well defeated or significantly weakened. So uh, they crumbled because uh, they need to find some uh, new ideologies and uh, uh, these ideological differences uh, turned out to be too large to contain in one party. Uh, also, the social and economic problems uh, resulting from the communist period and also the transformation period, uh, like growing in economic, economic inequalities, uh, turned out uh, much more important for voters than uh, environmentalist uh, agenda. Uh, so they were deemed to be a secondary importance. Um, uh, and uh, finally, there were some um, the changes made uh, regarding the party uh, system, the political system, um, mostly in, in regard to party, uh, political party funding, access to uh, mass media, uh, regarding electoral thresholds, and uh, it made the Green parties uh, unable uh, to cope with these changes. So uh, most of them uh, lose their parliamentary representation, um, although some of them, like in Estonia, Latvia and Czech Republic, uh, they managed to uh, ma restore it in the uh, two th uh, 2000s. Um, yeah, and uh, generally it was uh, much harder for uh, niche uh, ideologies to uh, be represented in the parliament uh, unless they were part of larger coalitions. Uh, and because of this, this parties that were successful uh, usually uh, were different from Western ones as they match environmentalism with uh, social conservatism and our pro-market stance. Yes, it was uh, very hard to um, appeal to pro-social policies uh, when the uh, official uh, propaganda of new democratic uh, market states uh, was uh, very uh, pro-market. So people don't want to hear about, uh, didn't want to hear about the uh, turning back to uh, state protection of economy. Uh, and in some cases, uh, mostly uh, in the case of uh, Latvian Greens, uh, it was matched uh, with uh, such right-wing concepts like uh, nationalism or anti-LGBT issues, uh, the portray, traditional portrait of women uh, roles, and so on. So definitely it was much different uh, from the mm, Green Party's views in the West. Uh, and uh, this is the graph uh, on which uh, we can see the um, green, green Party's ideological position so, and uh, in gray. So uh, there are parties from the uh, Western Europe. In black, we have parties from Eastern Europe. So on the mm, x-axis, we have uh, economy. So on the left side, uh, we have uh, more statist economy uh, stance. On the right, we have more pro-market. Uh, also on the mm, uh, y-axis, on the vertical axis, we have libertarian, authoritarian dimension. These two dimensions are taken from the Chapel Hill Expert Survey. So there are the main uh, axis of party competition used in the survey. Uh, so as we can see, the uh, parties in the West uh, tend to be located mostly uh, in the libertarian and uh, left economic uh, corner, while the green parties uh, in the uh, Central and Eastern Europe are scattered um, more along the screen and some of them being definitely quite uh, right wing and uh, right wing in, in social cultural terms and both in uh, economic terms. 
Uh, also, uh, the, the other dimension that is used in this survey is uh, cosmopolitanism, nationalism, which is the um, it is glued from some other sub dimensions. So we have uh, again the parties from the uh, Central and Eastern Europe in black and in gray are parties from Western Europe and dark gray parties from Southern Europe. So uh, also here we can see that um, parties uh, from the Central and Eastern Europe are more nationalist than uh, parties that uh, work in Western Europe. Uh, and in both of these uh, graphs, there are no Green Party uh, in Poland, as uh, it's uh, too small to be um, accounted for in uh, nearly all surveys. Uh, so uh, the party uh, was created in the 2003. It was the wave uh, of the second wave of um, formation of green parties, when uh, s s several green parties uh, that were closer um, ideologically to Western ones were created. And among them, the most successful was uh, Lehet Masa Politica. So the Green Party from the Hungary politics can be different. Also, their uh, splits. Uh, also, so, uh, some parties like Czech and Slovak party repositioned themselves, so they moved themselves uh, more to the left, uh, both in uh, social, cultural and economic terms uh, in regard um, to um, their previous position. Uh, and uh, on the picture, there is uh, a recent protest from last year, uh, as uh, Poland had um, migrants from Syria from the border and uh, our government uh, were trying uh, to not allow them to enter Poland in a way uh, violating uh, both constitution, human rights and um, well, some other legal documents. So they are protesting against it. Uh, the guy on the right is Marek Kosakowski, uh, which was previous leader of the Greens. Mm. Okay, so the Greens in Poland are closer to Western ones. Uh, so they are pro environmental, pro uh, LGBT, pro uh, women rights, uh, and combine them with the left wing economic position. Uh, so it turned out as we, uh, sorry, made some uh, surveys uh, together with Eurogreens and Hennish Bauer Foundation that there is a problem with finding a voters uh, who share all of these components. Uh, so people who uh, were very uh, pro-environmental were uh, either not very interested in politics or uh, they were uh, prone to vote for uh, center parties. Uh, people uh, who uh, have left-wing economic position uh, uh, were uh, very frequently uh, opposed to uh, cultural liberalism. And they uh, either voted for the post-communist party or the uh, right-wing parties. Uh, because yes, in Poland, the right-wing parties has very left-wing uh, economic stance, uh, which is also popular in some uh, other Central European countries. Uh, so uh, we, we couldn't find a larger group of voters in the surveys and also Green Party couldn't uh, appeal to uh, their voters. They, uh, on, on, they tried in many uh, different combinations. So for example, they tried to ally with um, um, uh, workers' unions, uh, they uh, tried uh, to align with a uh, new social movements organization, which was uh, more fruitful than with for workers union, but uh, unfortunately they still have a low uh, recognition and also most uh, Polish voters uh, see the Green Party as they are asked about uh, what the Green Party uh, postulates uh, as purely environmentalist one. Uh, so this uh, table shows the uh, Polish Green Party in elections, the all elections they took part. So as you can see, uh, the, mm, well, their output wasn't very uh, fascinating, but uh, 
either they started independently or at the beginning uh, until uh, 2015 in the right wing uh, coalitions or on the right wing, uh, sorry, left wing list, which are marked in uh, red, uh, they still had very poor results. Uh, their first seats um, in anything was in 2010 local election uh, when they uh, used um, well, they were able to use the problems with uh, the post-communist party to uh, get a very good position and they uh, finally uh, received five seats in the local government. But there, uh, then it was again uh, elections with nothing. Uh, and the last change uh, that was made uh, was uh, made in 2018 and 19, and uh, it was a result of a radical change in Polish political system, which was uh, caused by uh, the democratization uh, politics uh, by uh, law and justice. Uh, as uh, since the beginning uh, of their governance in 2015, uh, law and justice uh, started to introduce uh, policies uh, that violated uh, constitution or even made some changes uh, without uh, necessary uh, background from the uh, legal background. Uh, the, most uh, of the political forces started to uh, act uh, in unity as uh, united opposition against democratic erosion. So uh, in the um, uh, 2019 uh, uh, European Parliament elections, we have two party blocks. We have uh, block, uh, we, we have of course law and justice and on the second side it was uh, a block of united opposition called uh, European coalition and in this block was uh, were center parties, uh, right-wing parties, left-wing parties and also the Greens. so nearly all Polish parties united in one block. Uh, so in this uh, European Parliament elections, because um, the specificity of European Parliament election is that uh, there is less uh, seats, less places on the left because there is uh, less uh, constituencies. Uh, the Greens got quite poor uh, electoral um, lists, uh, seats on the, uh, sorry, places on the electoral list. But uh, due to the coalition uh, accepting the party name, in, uh, and it was the official, uh, well, the largest political party, and it had the name Greens uh, inside it. So uh, um, it allowed Greens to get some more publicity, more uh, access to media, and uh, it resulted in much better uh, re result they had previously in um, national elections. Uh, and finally, uh, in the same year, it was a um, election to national parliament, and in this election, uh, Greens uh, were given uh, one uh, first place on the electoral seats, um, list and two second places on the electoral list. Uh, so uh, they finally uh, managed to get uh, first three uh, seats in the uh, lower chamber of the parliament, which, well, I could say there were three, first uh, three seats for the Greens, but uh, in the parliament 2011-2015 uh, at the end of the, um, uh, at the parliamentary term, the Greens uh, were able to, um, uh, well, um, well, to, to get one uh, member of the parliament uh, from uh, other party to, um, uh, well, she, she accepted uh, th 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 their political brand, so they, for some months, uh, have uh, parliamentary representation, although they didn't get it in elections. So, uh, well, this, it's, it's hard to say about the success, but uh, definitely it's breaking the threshold of parliamentary representation, which is a very uh, good thing for a party when it comes to institu institutionalization. But uh, well, it, it will be up to Greens whether they uh, will be uh, to, uh, able to negotiate again a good position on electoral list because they are still staying in parliamentary club with um, uh, Civic Platform, which is the main partner of this coalition. And uh, usually they vote together uh, with uh, them, except some uh, key uh, 
voting uh, when their ideological positions are very different. Uh, but um, it's uh, I, I, the last few slides. It's about the. Um, uh, green voters. So this is the survey from 2019 in which we were able to ask uh, some questions specifically about the Polish Green. So this is the propensity to vote uh, among Polish Greens. So uh, the question is about how likely is that you ever vote for this party. So as we can see, uh, there is uh, one fourth of uh, Polish voters do not know the party still. So this is a large problem. Uh, and of course, we know that some of the people who said something also don't know the party, but uh, yeah, they uh, yeah, well, wanted to say that no party. Uh, so so uh, there are not many people here uh, at, at the extremely likely or very likely uh, answers that want to uh, vote for the Greens. And uh, the second problem is that uh, if we ask these people who they voted for in the previous elections, uh, they split uh, for the left party uh, in which there were Greens, uh, but most of them voted for the right wing parties in which uh, there were no Greens on the list. Yeah. So this is the civic platform, the center right party. This is the law and justice party. Yeah. So uh, 20 mm, uh, percent, uh, well, among the 20 percent of, of, of those who are very extremely likely to vote the to vote for the Greens said that in the previous election they voted for law and justice. Um, and uh, this is the last one, and this is about vote intent. So uh, again, this is split. Uh, in this case, nearly half half with a bit more ma major group for uh, wanted to vote for. Uh, the civic coalitions or the um, central, 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 central right coalitions that the Greens are currently in, um, and uh, yeah, but not quite a large group of people also want to vote for the uh, left, uh, and uh, the problem. Uh, well, the the, the good uh, idea with joining the right wing uh, or central right party was that uh, the Greens, uh, sorry, I stopped the sharing, uh, that the Greens uh, were able to compete with uh, the center party for other voters. Yes, because in um, left or center left coalitions, they were competing for the same voter with the uh, left wing party as the ideological positions of their voters are nearly uh, the same. So it's rather, uh, well, personal uh, preference or um, image preference uh, to decide to which party to vote, left or greens. Uh, but uh, in the central coalition, they both get, get greater visibility as it was a much larger group and uh, were able to uh, present their program. Uh, and the last thing uh, is that uh, also uh, they were able to um, uh, remain their identity. As most of the people sees the Green only uh, as environmentalist party, they were not uh, endangering the image of the central right uh, in this way. Move. Maybe I, I will talk more after the questions because I think it's enough now. Okay, great. Um, thanks, thanks for that, Agnieszka. That's, that's really a kind of really good kind of clear kind of overview. Can, before we have questions from the sort of contributions from the, the audience, and I, I know there are a couple of very prominent party specialists sitting in the audience. Um, can I just, can I just ask you a, a quick question as the chair, which is, um, could you just say something about who are the Greens? Who are their, who are their voters? And also who are their leaders? Is it the same, uh, have, I mean, some Green parties in the region, different groups of people have kind of come in and taken over the Green Party and then moved on. So could you just say maybe a few words about you know, what kind of people vote for the Greens? Are they the usual suspects of young, educated, sort of urban hipsters, or could you just? 
Yeah, but um, what can I say? It's uh, this usual <laughs> usual people you expect to vote for the Greens. So it's uh, of course um, large cities, educated, uh, post materialists. Although we have a very limited number of post materialists in Poland. Uh, people interested in um, environment, uh, but uh, not so uh, much in social protection of economy. Yeah, but m mostly educated from urban educated, uh, mostly women. Okay. okay. Yeah, so okay. There, are, there, there is no difference here uh, with the West. Okay. And I also wondered, has this switch from sort of left coalition to r right liberal coalition, has this been controversial among Greens? Have there been debates? Yeah. Yeah, of course, it was controversial within the party and uh, within the voters of the party. So uh, they definitely lost some uh, lost some activists and voters, but they gained more. And uh, because of their uh, higher uh, recognizability of the party, uh, there were uh, since last uh, for for the last, I, I guess. Uh, three or four years, uh, there are uh, incoming uh, stream of new members. Okay. So the Greens uh, always had a very large problem with members. Uh, they usually had like uh, 100, 200 members, but in uh, the last few years, uh, they were able to, uh, I think, achieve about 1,000, 2,000 like this. I don't have very clear numbers because it's sometimes hard to say who is the member of the Greens. So we have metrics who is paying uh, the party fees, but also who is acting uh, within the party, uh, who supports in, in media. So, but it's close to one to two thousand thousand now. Okay. Um, well, we've got plenty of time for questions and, and comments. So could I just invite anyone in the audience who'd, who'd like to maybe put, put your your virtual hand up uh, if you'd like to kind of come in with a with a with a with a comment or a, or a question maybe in this Hang time I, I i can okay. ask the audience about yeah. something because yeah. um the greens currently have the very large problem uh, regarding the uh energy crisis uh, because uh, most of the greens are definitely anti-atom uh, and are nuclear energy in um energetics uh so uh, as I um, trace the uh, green social media, I noticed that recently uh, all of their uh, posts are followed by many comments uh, regarding that. Yeah, th it is because of the uh, greens uh, that, well, Germany turns out there are uh, nuclear uh, plants, uh, that there is no nuclear plant in Poland. And uh, because of this, uh, um, the Europe is dependent on Russia uh, gas. So, uh, what do you think uh, about the, yeah, the possible stance of green parties uh, in this uh, case? Because uh, it seems that uh, Germany is at least rethinking uh, their move. Uh, and well, what is in Germany soon uh, will follow uh, in Poland. Uh, the Poland is preparing for to, to build its first uh, nuclear plant, which uh, well has a large opposition also from the Greens. Uh, so, uh, because uh, I, I know that some of us are also interested in the green, so well, uh, I hope that you came here <laughs> also because we share the same uh, interest in green parties. So, uh, how, how do you think the green parties could uh, respond to this um, pressure? Okay, does anyone want to answer that? And, and I'll, then I think we might get Matthew's question. I'm hoping he's uh, now unmuted. Thanks, sorry about that. Um, okay, does anyone want to? jump in and respond to that maybe it's a hard question okay should we leave that matthew do you want to you should now be unmuted yes you want to sorry come can you hear me i, I can hear you I'm a, I'm a terrible technophobe so these things tend to happen no we're glad um, to have you and go ahead <laughs> no problem uh, two two points um, on the origin of um, green parties in Central and Eastern Europe and, and the Polish differentiation. Um, do we see the repositioning of the Polish Green Party um, more akin to the traditional placing of uh, green parties in Central and Eastern Europe, or do we see that in more of the repositioning we're seeing in other sort of Western countries where you're seeing green parties tacked to the centre? I'm thinking of places like Switzerland, where you've got a new Green Liberal Party which is on the rise. 
and the Green Party in Germany, which has, you know, tacked to the centre a lot more than it has done traditionally. Do we see the Polish Greens in that um, sort of vein? And also just quickly on the um, positioning of the Green Party with uh, the Civic Coalition, uh, Civic Coalition and Civic Platform. Um, do we see that as a natural partnership or is it perhaps more surprising that they've gone in that direction rather than with the new party, you know, Poland 2050, which is more new politics, liberal politics? Is that something that was considered by the Greens in Poland? Okay, Agnieszka? Okay, so uh, regarding repositioning, uh, we can see repositioning, but more into the Western direction, well, German direction. Uh, at the beginning, uh, the Green Party had uh, nearly equal uh, number of activists uh, being pro-market and being pro-social uh, uh, in economy. So uh, for, I guess, first seven or eight years they uh, avoided any stance on economic issues not to lose half of the members uh, so they uh, were talking about everything uh, but when on their congresses they wanted to ha have some uh, to agree on some deal on economy uh, it was uh, always postponed because uh, they couldn't agree but uh, since uh, i guess 2011 the number of uh, people with pro statist pro social um, stance uh, grew and they managed to uh, yeah, to, to get their uh, framing dominant in the party. So most of the people who are pro-market either left or uh, changed their uh, views, at least ch change their uh, public, uh, the, the ways they are speaking publicly about economy. So they're most, most uh, left-wing in, in economic terms now that they were uh, in the beginning. But uh, regarding the social cultural axis, there were also very, uh, well, the party with uh, the most uh, radical um, uh, program on the Polish scene, which means uh, generally something about the central or left on the Western uh, um, uh, political scene. And uh, regarding the partnership, it's not the, definitely not natural partnership because the programs of these two parties, the Civic Coalition and uh, Greens are totally different. Uh, but uh, the Civic Coalition had the problem uh, because after the um, uh, European uh, Parliament elections, when there were very indeed large uh, European coalition, the coalition broke and the left wanted to start individually. Yeah, so uh, then the other parties started to moving out of this coalition. And finally, it was only the civic platform and its splitter group, the modern in this coalition. So it was uh, well hard to say that this is uh, the European coalition and definitely they wanted uh, to have some other views uh, inside, uh, but they were unable to um, get the acceptance of left-wing parties, uh, mostly because uh, the left-wing parties got uh, very poor places in the European elections and they didn't want to have anything in common in civic platform. Uh, but they were able to um, remind, to, 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 to um, ask the Greens to remain. So uh, they got, uh, some fig leaf to call themselves Steve, a large social coalition against the bad law and justice, against the democratic erosion, uh, because the Greens were so far left, and still uh, because they were uh, considered mostly environmentalist for majority of people, uh, they did not hurt the image of a uh, civic platform as a central party. Yeah, so, so it definitely it's not natural, but it seems that it's uh, profitable for both sides. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thanks for that. Any other comments or questions people want to come in with? Uh, so that's Marta. I'm going to... Um, uh, can you unmic yourself? Or I'm going to ask you to unmute. Yeah. Okay, can you come in? Oh, fantastic. So I don't need to give you permission. Do go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Agnieszka. <clears throat> um, I have actually two questions. One is, um, um, I'm, I'm really intrigued by this um, um, re recent relative electoral success of the Green Party. Uh, and I'm really curious about your, um, uh, your take on that. What, what is the, um, uh, the cause of those particular um, MPs getting elected and whether you think that it might have something to do with 
on the one hand, perhaps a bit of a generational change within the Green Party itself, uh, but also this uh, kind of um, a, a very visible alliance, um, well, at, at, at least of those um, MPs such as um, um, Mrs. Um, Malgorzata Trach, uh, who, as far as I remember, was very visible uh, during the um, earlier waves of women's protests starting in 2016 in Poland, uh, along with, uh, you know, many female MPs or future MPs from actually a variety of parties. I'm thinking, you know, not necessarily of people like uh, Marta Lempart, but uh, uh, politicians such as uh, Monika Rosa, formerly Modern Party and now Civic Platform, or Agnieszka Dziemianowicz-Bong, formerly Razem Party, and now I think she's with the a social democratic alliance. Uh, so, you know, I wonder whether that has anything to do with uh, with their activism and with the kind of uh, generational shift, if there has been any. So that's the first question. And the second question, um, do you think there is any competition for the Green Party in terms of their inventum, uh, 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 um, yes, uh, the, the environmental uh, program? Um, from the far right in Poland. And this is a phenomenon that I think is observable in Germany um, with some far right uh, um, uh, parties or, or activists uh, really quite, quite, quite far on the, on the end of the scale um, being interested in uh, pro invent my, uh, oh, I'm gonna just break my tongue today. Um, environment related uh, um, um, issues um, uh, to, to do with conservation and this is this is a you know on the one hand quite a new phenomenon but then not that new anymore if there is anything uh, like that happening in in the polish far right at all thank you okay thanks for that um Agnieszka? so i think if we uh, the first question if you are talking about generational change uh, i think it's more uh, among the voters than the activists so i, I don't see uh, such large changes among activists um, but uh, regarding voters uh, there are uh, especially since the law and justice started uh, to rule uh, we have a very large um, activization of young people who previously were int not interested in politics and uh, usually vote uh, said that they are you know center right center left or something like this so we've got uh, mobilization and polarization of young people uh, especially young vote uh, women uh, who now uh, declare their extremely left-wing and social cultural terms, while uh, our um, young men uh, declare they are very right-wing in social cultural terms, which is uh, yeah, besides very funny. Uh, but when it comes to the people who became uh, MPs, I don't think that it was something special um, about the them. It was uh, special more about the civic platform that the civic platform has uh, weaker candidates in constituencies uh, they uh, started in. So it, it was the only um, re reason they got such a good places on electoral list. Uh, so, for, for example, uh, like Ursula Zieliska, she wasn't uh, a very lo lo long uh, member of Greens. Uh, she came from uh, UK. Uh, so so uh, it was Tomasz Anishka also wasn't very a uh, well known activist or politician. Uh, and uh, I, I remember that uh, in, I guess, 2000, six, it was uh, even Olga Tokarczuk on their list, uh, which is current noblest in literature. She wasn't noblest then, but she was very widely known. But still, the, she had very uh, poor number of votes because nobody even looked at Green's lists. Uh, so it's not their candidates, it's uh, rather the specificity of constituencies. Um, and 
a second thing, uh, definitely we don't have far right uh, environmentalism now in Poland, especially uh, after the conflict uh, about Białowieża. Uh, so the um, when peace uh, decided, uh, Lelon Justice decided there are uh, very anti uh, environmentalist and uh, activated um, nearly all uh, environmentalist groups against them. So they are not in position to steal anything from uh, environmentalism. Uh, but still, uh, the environmentalist issues uh, are well, it, it are growing in importance in Poland, but still uh, issues like climate change is, are, aren't considered uh, such dangerous as in Western Europe. Uh, so uh, the Greens uh, can have uh, together with uh, the left, which is also very pro-environmental, uh, the environmental issue, uh, so, so they have all this position, but they cannot at this moment uh, get too many voters uh, based on uh, environmentalism only. Thanks. Anyone else want to? Alan? I can see Alan's virtual oh, thank hand Thank you. Up. Thank you, Agnieszka. It's, it's, it's really exciting. Uh, I'm uh, intrigued by the by the Polish uh, Greens, indeed. I mean, it's it's a it's a fairly small party at the moment, uh, seemingly. I, uh, uh, I, I didn't quite get a sense of, of how big the organization is and, and you know, what drives the organization of the party. Um, it seems to me, I, I might get it completely wrong, so it, it's partly really a hypothesis that it, it's, it's one of these parties that there's an active group of uh, people who do not necessarily desire power, but, but may, may be, you know, excited by the prospect of, of uh, joining in politics. And there's this vacant famous label of, of green uh, environmentalist parties uh, that they are, uh, you know, that is a, probably a very, you know, a, a, a cause close to the uh, uh, heart. And, and uh, this is something that they just, uh, you know, that they, it's, it's a combination of, you know, uh, the agenda and, and also uh, a seeming political opportunity. And at the same time, it seems that the political opportunity isn't quite there. There aren't very many people who are actively, I mean, you, you have some percentages there with high propensity to vote green, but there aren't very many people who would vote for them. And, and uh, hence they are driven into these coalitions where they are seem to be ill-fitting. Uh, so I'm, I'm you know, just curious to hear your opinion on, on where they are. I mean, how, uh, is, is there any way forward to them? And inspired by uh, by your your you know uh, your question about the the, uh, the nuclear energy, I, I think that's that's a huge uh, that sort of dilemma or trilemma, and I don't know what the the, the uh, further words would be uh, for uh, all environmentalists. You know, where do we eventually get the energy from? And obviously, you know, anything renewable is, is good, but again, some of the renewables like uh, biomass can carry a high carbon footprint nevertheless. So you have the natural gas that maybe has a lower uh, carbon footprint than, than uh, uh, biomass, but uh, uh, is, is difficult for all sorts of other reasons. Uh, uh, including not being renewable. Um, and then you have the, the dreaded nuclear that's, you know, on a daily basis, not particularly damaging for the environment, but there's a risk of, of, a, of a major damage, to put it, put it mildly. And I, I think that kind of highlights the, the all sorts of the, the issues that environmentalist parties have um, uh, surrounding also the, the issues of, you know, that envi environmentalism isn't, isn't a, a very straightforward thing. You know, you can be con primarily concerned about the climate change, or you can be concerned about the protection of forests. And, and this is not necessary, you know, it, it, this can be linked. Uh, uh, but some of these issues motivate one set of people and, and absolutely it does nothing to others, um, or may even put others off. You know, I, I think the, the whole uh, issues around genetically modified crops is, is, is particularly revealing because it's, uh, you know, uh, in principle, it, it could be a, a, uh, 
a way to save the world from hunger and, and uh, deforestation, etc. But on the other hand, obviously, it's tampering with, with you know, the, what, what uh, uh, nature created. So it's maybe, you know, uh, uh, very off-putting to, to the more sort of conservative or, or uh, uh, fundamentalist, uh, you know, uh, environmentalist. And, and I, I think that captures the problem for, for most East European Greens that, you know, they, are, they can say that they are not, neither left nor wrong, but also on, on these all other issues, they need to, to take some sort of a position, but they, you know, they are to some extent contradictory. And the ultimate problem regarding energy is that, you know, you, you, you need some sort of a workable solution because you can have this primordial environmentalist that will become all very self-sufficient and, and uh, you know, only have a, have a solar panel on, on top of our roof. But uh, I mean, for, for most people, that's not really an option, is it? Um, uh, sorry, I mean, it's, it's a very, uh, because you asked the question and then and, um, obviously I, I, I took the liberty to answering it in so many words, but I'm mostly interested on, on how, you know, all these dilemmas uh, uh, match the experience of the Polish Greens and returning to more of my original question is whether the party in search of an electorate, as I would say, uh, will have any chances of actually finding any any core electorate to escape the shackles of these coalitions. Okay, thanks, thanks for that, Alan. So the prospects and the energy type picks. Could you also maybe, Agnieszka, say something about coal? Because Poland is known for its big coal um, and I'm just wondering how that sort of fits into environmental politics in, in Poland. Yeah, so um, starting from uh, looking for more suitable coalitions at the moment, uh, there are no. Uh, so the left uh, in Poland is currently uh, very fragmented. Uh, in the previous election, 2015 parliamentary election, there were no uh, green, uh, left party in uh, the parliament at all. Yeah, so only center-right and right parties. Uh, and here in this parliament, so we finally um, got the left uh, parliament, left-wing parliamentary club because the three uh, small left-wing parties managed to um, get some um, coalition. But there are, at the moment, there are already quarreling about uh, yeah, many different things, mostly the economic stance, as uh, some part of the Polish left is very uh, pro-market uh, and some is well pro-social, so they uh, cannot agree on, the many, on many issues uh, that are in parliament, especially uh, currently when the law and justice government is introducing many uh, well, you can say populist, but uh, many tra social transfers to uh, some so special groups like the parents with many children and so on. So the left have a um, very... Uh, it's very hard for the left to agree on these issues, how to vote together. Uh, so uh, on their own, the Greens have no chance at the moment, although, as I uh, said, the young uh, generation is definitely uh, more uh, brave and environmentalist than their parents as they um, they grew uh, uh, after the transition yeah they uh, didn't have uh, didn't see the communist system uh, so uh, for, for them some uh, social and economic problem uh, of the system and of the tr transformation uh, are just uh, passed uh, from the book so uh, yeah, maybe when um, they will uh, be more uh, sh larger share of those people in the uh, voter base, uh, the green have chance, but not at the moment. So uh, I guess they their best best is, best bet is to stay uh, in this uh, center right. Uh, well, the civic platform is a very strange party because some of their members are very uh, right wing and some of their left wing. So the official uh, image of the party is very blurry. And maybe because of this, they also needed the Greens who are very ideologically firm and distant. Uh, so uh, I think at the moment they have no better options. And uh, in the next election, which will be in 2000, 2000, uh, 2023, uh, also perhaps uh, there will be no other options. Maybe because when 
uh, always when there are law and justice roles, there is a very uh, large mobilization of civic activity in Poland because everybody is protesting against uh, law and justice. And uh, now we have very large uh, social movements like the uh, women's movement that managed to uh, cause the largest protest since the solidarity movement in Poland. Uh, it, it was a movement against the uh, change uh, of uh, pregnancy termination law. Uh, so maybe if they were able to uh, cooperate with these movements, they could have some chance. But the problem uh, with the Greens is that our they are not uh, fully supported with the uh, new social movement. For example, when they started, the large part of environmental movement was against them, partially because they uh, people thought uh, that the politics is dirty and uh, environmentalist activists should never enter politics, but partly because uh, a large part of Polish environmental movement was very uh, conservative. Uh, so uh, the Greens have a very uh, radical stance on uh, LGBT rights, abortion, and it was not acceptable for environmental movement. So even their uh, evident base do not accept them fully. Uh, also, um, such large movements like women's movement prefer to uh, cooperate with larger parties, especially civic platform now, uh, because it's not profitable to cooperate with the Greens because with their three votes, uh, they cannot change much. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, and switching to uh, the energy problem, uh, yes, in Poland, uh, Poland is a flat country with uh, no wind. So, uh, and we don't have also uh, very fast rivers. Uh, so uh, because of this, it's very hard to um, make a system based only on renewables. Uh, again, uh, the second thing is that uh, nearly all my, uh, Polish re major relevant parties uh, are, um, are not against coal, uh, actually, uh, because uh, the uh, group of miners is one of the uh, best organized uh, workers groups in Poland, and there are uh, cooperating with every government. So uh, yes, yeah, so, so because of that, still Poland uh, takes all, nearly all of this, uh, its energy from coal and we have the uh, most pollution due to, uh, due to uh, producing electricity from uh, coal uh, in Europe and uh, in some rankings, even uh, a few of our cities like Krakow uh, have uh, the top places in the world rankings of pollution, of air pollution. Uh, so the call is very uh, fragile uh, politically thing to talk uh, in Poland because uh, in the same moment, the group of miners are getting antagonized and uh, started start, start to talk about Polish identity and being mm. built on coal and so on. Uh, yeah, so. <laughs> It's not that people don't uh, want uh, nuclear uh, plants in Poland. I, I think most uh, over majority are for, but uh, the government, I, I think, don't want to have more protests. They are actually currently planning the building the uh, nuclear power plant, but two previous governments also were planning to build, starting to build the nuclear power plants, but uh, being afraid of conflict, it was postponed and postponed, and we don't have any. Okay, that's, that's, that's great. It's really interesting what you say about social movements. Um, because of course the classic account of uh, West European Green parties is that they are the products of, 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 of social movements. I mean, it would be interesting to see if any of these social movements eventually decide to form a, maybe, a, maybe another, another Green party. Um, oh, I just want to ask you as well, Agnieszka, are the Polish Greens still worth watching? Because I mean, if we know anything about Central and East European politics, we know that um, there's, I mean, Alan's written about this a lot. There's a, an appetite for newness among among voters, and that previously minor parties can suddenly emerge 
as a sort of new option which voters turn to. So it's just like, say, the Czech Pirates, who were a really obscure party for, uh, for many years and then became quite an important party. So are the Greens a party to, to watch? Uh, could, could they, can they present themselves as new or? I think in Poland, uh, people uh, have a very large appetite for populist newness. So uh, we've got some parties that are very hard to say what uh, they're about, what uh, are their ideology. So we had, for example, in 2011, Palikot movement, which was generally on the left, but sometimes it was on the right. It depends uh, who, who are speaking. Uh, then for two uh, parliamentary times, we have Cookies movement, uh, who, well, even more was blurred. Uh, I, well, no, nobody can and say uh, what they wanted, uh, except that uh, they were very angry at uh, the current political elite. And some of this, uh, well, dissatisfied populist voters were taken by uh, peace, uh, by, law, by law and justice, uh, which became also quite blurry uh, in a few areas. But uh, uh, well, I, I don't think that uh, such uh, ideologically uh, distant uh, from the you know, center of the political scene uh, party can win anything. Uh, I would rather say that, uh, that there's, oh, now we have Hołownia. Yes, I, I forgot mm, about yeah, him. Yeah. And Hołownia's movement, I really, uh, well, He's uh, against abortion, but sometimes he is pro-abortion. Uh, yes, uh, he's uh, for the state control of the market, but not too much. Generally, his major uh, slogan is, uh, we need to talk. Yeah, the people should talk about it. Yeah, so people love him. And uh, it's strange how uh, his, um, he, he's able to profit from uh, also social movement, social activation of uh, well, activation of society against peace. Uh, so, uh, for example, it was uh, mm, there were some research on Polish women's movement, current Polish women's movement, and also uh, most of the participants who took part in the movement want to vote for Hawownia because uh, he is not extreme. Yeah, it's very bad word in Polish politics to be extreme. So. He is definitely uh, anti-extreme. Yeah, so, 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 so I think that this is some stream of uh, politics without no name, parties without program that uh, t takes uh, po Polish, uh, you know, uh, people with appetites for newness. And these parties will change, of course, but they will remain the same, the same lack of program. Okay. Okay. That's 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 interesting. Anyone else like to come in? Um, at all. Um, uh, is there a hand up or? I've got a question if nobody else wants to come in, but um, we'll type something in the chat if you'd prefer. Okay, if no one wants to come in, I've got I've just got one I've got one question, which is you mentioned the politics of de-democratization, which is sort of also known by democratic erosion, democratic backsliding. There are lots of terms, um, and I, I just wondered how it, you could relate this to the Polish Greens. Have they joined up with the the, the civic bloc? partly because they're concerned to sort of defend democracy or simply because they're looking for the best opportunity to get um, representation and more generally how do you feel it shapes the um, you know the chances of a, of, a, of, a, of a small party I mean it's been said that uh, when politics is kind of reduced to two blocks kind of populist anti-populist pro-democracy, pro-autocracy, whatever you want to call it, that sort of tends to break the normal party competition. So I, I just wondered if you could, could comment on that, because Poland is seen as a sort of democratic backslider very often. Uh, so why they wanted to join? Well, I think both reasons, but uh, since the uh, beginning of law and justice rule, uh, the Greens were very... Uh, um, the, the defending democracy because it's the core of their program. Uh, but uh, previous, uh, before uh, the 
government of law and justice, they were protesting uh, and against anti-democratic policies of civic platforms. So uh, yeah, they are definitely closer to civic platform, but still the distance uh, is uh, very large. Uh, so uh, before the elections, the Greens were discussing their options both with the left and uh, with the civic platform. And uh, definitely they got worst electoral uh, where was worst places on the electoral list and uh, maybe also they were tired uh, because in many uh, elections the left uh, tr treated them as their minor partner that yes of course we need to have the greens because uh, in other way somebody will t t take them or uh, because they were uh, starting independently and they will took some voters from us but they were uh, always given poor places and were treated, uh, well, not in a very fair way. Sometimes the um, negotiations uh, were broken uh, by the left, so maybe the Greens also needed the change. But definitely it was a very uh, large problem with uh, their activists and their electorate that the party that just previously were uh, protesting against, now there will be, there will be our coalition partner. Um, Okay. And have the Greens been squeezed by competition? I mean, many people were watching this party, um, Razem, uh, a few years ago, this radical left party, which would sort of seem to be in the same kind of, at least would appeal maybe to the same voters as, um, as, as a Green party. Could, could you maybe say something a bit more about these relationships of the sort of left parties and the Greens and the radical left? Sorry, Sean, can I just chip in? Because yeah. it's very closely related to okay. what you just said. Yep. This is exactly what I've been thinking of, uh, of, you know, who is actually the, the, the most uh, important competitor for the Green Party? Because, you know, naturally you'd think Razem um, is, is the obvious opponent in terms of um, um, you know a, a lot of uh, uh, similarities and, and the, the profile of, of the voter, but at the same time you know if you think of um, the differences and you said something like that uh, earlier on that um, some of the voters might have been attracted to the Green Party because they were um, uh, kind of driven away from, for example, Razan Party because of some of their qualities, and I think you know perhaps. Um, their economic policies, the kind of very strong um, take on that, uh, or perhaps it's also their um, uh, strong ideological position. Um, so kind of pro-choice, uh, strongly pro-choice. So I suppose Greens might be a bit more conservative on that uh, on that end. But then I'm thinking pro-environmentalist, a little bit conservative, but kind of you know lukewarm. How about Hovnia? I mean, this really looks like this is the real main competitor. So just kind of adding to Sean's point in that way. Thank you. Okay, so regarding Razem, it's uh, well not only ideological um, competition; it's also personal competition because the Razem uh, was created uh, at the beginning by. Uh, well, mostly green uh, members. Yeah, so uh, when the RASM was created, uh, they took uh, some of the green uh, activists and voters, also from their uh, you, you know ma ma major party um, organization. So like from the uh, Central Council. So th for many years, it was a very large conflict between these two small parties. And now they are, I think uh, they are getting quite well uh, together. They are able to protest against something together, but there is uh, not much love uh, between them. Uh, but uh, still, the, the voters that uh, could vote for Razem or for the Greens uh, are in such a small group that uh, yeah, you can compete for them, but uh, still you won't want the election. So uh, I think at the current position, uh, the Greens uh, 
are quite good because uh, they are still able to uh, attract some left-wing voters uh, because, well, as, as a platform, the Pacific platform is a stretch from left to the right. So um, as for some left-wing voters, it doesn't matter that uh, their coalition partner is so blurry, but uh, they were also able to attract uh, the part of people who voted for the Greens uh, due to their environmentalist and social cultural reason, but were opposed to their uh, pro-social economic policies. So um, uh, there, are, there is no difference regarding uh, social cultural issues between the Greens and Razem. If any, I think the Greens uh, are more radical uh, and uh, the differences uh, cost uh, the, the differences are based mostly on the economy, which, well, Razem get, get, gets more left wing, but also, uh, well, these issues like uh, uh, renewable energy, so the Razem is uh, pro nuclear and the Greens are against, and GMO, well, Razem is uh, pro and Greens are against. So, well, uh, they compete for similar voters, but uh, I think. Uh, the only way for Greens is to uh, try to attract uh, the voters more from the center because it's very uh, limited number of uh, left-wing voters at all. Okay, thanks for that. Uh, anyone else want to jump in? To jump in here, there's a lot of things we could talk about. Feel free to type something in the chat if you you can't talk on mic or you don't want to talk on mic or. Okay, I, I've got another point to raise. Um, you you um, um, you mentioned the sort of uh, in your presentation the, the area of post material voters, um, and um, you know we we again the you know classic West European literature is that the Greens are products of social change, of value shifts, the rise of post-material you know, values, Ronald Inglehart and, 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 and so on. Um, I just wondered if you tracked track social change and value change. I mean, Poland has had you know, 30 years of social change. It's had huge economic growth. Um, um, has there been a sort of value shift, a sort of silent revolution the rise of post-material voters at all and and if not why not uh, well uh, if any it's the opposite i guess uh well there are post-materialists but uh, there are like less than 10 percent people who in uh, european value survey uh are classified as such uh the Problem is that if we go to uh, original Inglehart hypothesis, uh, it should be people uh, who uh, were born uh, in, in the new system. Yeah, so mm -hmm. who didn't uh, have uh, scarcity of resources uh, through all of their life. So these people are just uh, like somebody was born, uh, uh, let's say, ninety-five, because the initial years after the transition were definitely scarcity years. Uh, so now they have uh, less than 30, let's, let's say 25, 27 years. So they are just starting to uh, um, vote in elections. Maybe they voted once or twice uh, so, so far. So uh, the people who uh, were born in a democratic system uh, constitute uh, as, so, such a small portion of voters that uh, even uh, because indeed there are uh, more cross materialists than the oldest group of voters, but they are just, uh, yeah, we need to wait. Uh, I think like 20, 30 years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Although we should say as well, I think that uh, Ronald Inglehart's collaborator, Chris Christian Velsau, who, who, who's published fairly actively, does mention that when there are kind of uh, exogenous shocks and social crises, that liberal values can go, as, as he thinks, temporarily backwards. So maybe we're there at the moment. Oh, I see someone's hand. Alan, do you want to jump in? Yeah, I, I just wanted to add to that. I, I do not think we should necessarily... Um, assume that everything that Ronald Hart uh, suggested about the value change and then rise of post-materialism is, is exactly true. Uh, because uh, I've been looking, for example, just casually, but nevertheless, uh, if, you, if you look at the um, 
uh, for example, attitudes towards uh, LGBTQ uh, 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 people in in say, say Estonia, then there's been a there's been a shift in the attitudes across the board, regardless of when people were born. So uh, uh, I, I think uh, Inglehart is putting too much emphasis on uh, on on general generational replacement. There are other ways in which values can change, especially if, uh, perhaps especially in uh, 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 political social environments that are changing very fast. Uh, so I, I think that, for, for example, the, the green um, uh, or environmental attitudes can also sh uh, shift quite fast, uh, for example, already because of the, the money the European Union is pouring on the on the issues, the, the big green renewal initiatives, um, and uh, that will have some sort of impact if, when, when people see that, for example, uh, renewables and, and uh, um, alternative energy sources are actually a viable, you know, alternative, at least partial alternative. So I, that can speed things up considerably. So to put it, you know, even, even more bluntly, I think that the thesis of generation and replacement was wrong or it's 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 wrong to assume that it may have worked that way in western europe uh but it, it's a it's a rather outdated uh, uh idea of you know social and political change uh, to assume that uh, eastern europe must go through everything that western europe went through uh, 30 years ago or so on at the same at the same similar pace um, i'm not taking issue with you but i'm, I'm taking issue with with uh, you know some of the hegemony of, of, of uh, West European uh, thinking and, and often, you know, uncritical uh, acceptance of, of some of these assumptions when, when trying to use the same models to uh, interpret, uh, uh, to interpret, uh, uh, you know, or analyze East, East European politics. Also, I, I'm not quite sure whether post-materialism in that very particular uh, form is uh, the only or even even the the most important potential basis for for green or environmental politics in 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 eastern europe eastern europe indeed when you look at germany then then the greens made the real breakthrough uh, if anything when they kind of relaxed the post materialist bit a little bit i'm, I'm not quite I'm, I'm not saying that they they've completely given up on that uh, far from that uh, but they, they just managed to become a much broader church and then political parties learn from each other. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure the Greens or any parties with, a, with, a, with, a, with an element of green there uh, elsewhere are very, very carefully looking at what happened to Germany because they also want to have, hold the post of the, uh, of the uh, foreign minister. Okay. Do you want to come back on that, Agnieszka, at all? It's an intriguing model you're suggesting a value change, Alan, but I won't, I won't, as you're not the speaker, I won't ask you about it. Agnieszka, do you want to come back on that? Uh, yes, I, I was referring uh, only to this economic aspect of uh, post-materialist, materialist divide. So there's also a very large shift uh, regarding uh, the um, attitude towards LGBT plus rights and to women's rights uh, and, and so on in Poland. But uh, still, uh, we all had in schools, uh, the very, there is no alternative ideology regarding economic changes. Uh, so uh, people uh, in Poland, voters in Poland are more responsive to uh, neoliberalism, uh, economic neoliberalism than, uh, for example, talking about workers' rights, workers' union, and so on, because it's still a uh, birth assumptions that, oh, there is a communist among us. So uh, only about this, because regarding the cultural choice, definitely uh, it's unprecedented and unexpected uh, change uh, on attitudes. Okay, thanks for that. And uh, someone else's hand has gone up. Uh, Matthew, do you want to do you want to come in? You should be able to just unmic yeah. and, and speak. Yeah. Um, just a, a couple of uh, points um, on the the fuzziness, the ideological fuzziness and blurriness of um, civic platform and and the Polish Greens. Um, can we see that as mutually beneficial for for both sides? You know, particularly at the at, at the electoral level now, when they're trying to appeal to as many people as possible. Um, this electoral fuzziness has always been the case with civic platform, but incorporating established parties that can capture that left-wing vote without relying on left-wing members of civic platform seems to be a plus. 
Um, also, in terms of competition with other parties, we've talked about uh, Razem and um, Hovina's new party, but uh, the traditional sort of agrarian party and partner of the civic platform has been the Polish People's Party, uh, which are another sort mm. of um, socially conservative party, which is having a mini resurgence in the polls. You know, it's still high, high single digits, but it's, it's getting up there again. And they didn't, they're not part of civic coalition either. And so just competition potentially between the Greens and uh, the Polish People's Party as it relates to cooperation with civic platform. Okay, so for the first uh, question uh, about the fuzziness, yes, it's definitely a good point that it's not only beneficial for the civic platform that uh, the Greens uh, are the partner in the coalition, but it's also good for the Greens so uh, they can, uh, for example, vote uh, in the parliament sometimes with the left wing of the civic platform, they are not uh, alone in, in this. Mm. How, uh, and regarding the Polish uh, People's Party, so the Agrarian Party, it's another party that definitely is socially conservative, but it has a program of that is beneficial to Polish uh, farmers, but uh, you cannot place them easily on most questions because uh, they were able to join uh, both right wing governments and left wing governments. So there are yeah, they are uh, happy to change their uh, position when uh, the government places are uh, available. Uh, so I don't think at all that Greens compete with the uh, well, maybe only with the uh, with the agrarian um, party, and maybe only with the color of their logos, but because well the people who vote for uh, PSL, which is this agrarian party, are definitely so, so socially, uh, culturally conservative. And they are mostly the, well, extended families of the activists uh, of the party. It's very, <laughs> well, fam familialist party. Uh, and uh, yeah, so, 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 so I don't think there is any competition. And also green are definitely mostly from all uh, very large cities and large cities uh, and uh, they were able to have some activists in the rural areas that they have uh, even few, uh, two or three uh, places in the local government in villages but uh, it's uh, on the whole base of party activists it's a very it's a large minority Okay, that's it. so they're not natural. They would seem to be natural natural coalition partners. The if the People's Party have a kind of rural base and they're more socially conservative, and the Greens are more metropolitan, then there there might be a an opportunity for some kind of alliance. Or is that this kind of alliance was between civic platform and uh, ah, okay. agrarian party because the civic platform, due to their blurriness, yeah. uh, wasn't taking a stance on abortion or um, LGBT plus rights or their stance was something. Yes, this is definitely something to be talked about in the future. Mm. Yes, so, so they were able to play together, but not with the Greens. OK, it's an interesting phenomenon. I mean, the, the Czech pirates who, who now sit with the Greens teamed up with um, more conservative local politicians, but that didn't under, that didn't turn out very well for them. OK, any more questions? We've got about uh, just, just under 10 minutes. So um, does anyone want to? I have, to, I think, my, my final question, but I'm going to ask it unless anyone else wants to jump in, do do jump in, um, which is Agnieszka, in some ways, if you look at the Polish Greens, I, I, I could almost ask you, why do they still exist? Because they don't have many voters, they don't have much organisation, their prospects aren't great. Um, is it just that the green brand somehow sort of survives? And I wondered, and this is my question, could you say something about the relation, their relationship with the wider sort of European Green Party family with the greens at kind of European um, level. What's that relationship been like? And are, are they sort of sustained by their brand more than by anything else? Well, um, there would not be Polish greens without European greens. So uh, at the beginning, uh, due to electoral successes of greens in Western Europe, when uh, the greens were uh, formed, uh, other uh, le left wing parties uh, were very concerned about and uh, everybody expected the greens to uh, turn out better in elections. It doesn't happen, but still the pressure and uh, prominence on green movement 
in Western Europe is something that uh, mm, helps the Greens, that they are not perceived as something that is crazy. Uh, mm. you, you know, people should care about the economy, who care about the envir environment, because people see that the same Green parties in Western Europe uh, are not perceived as, uh, well, extreme crazy parties. Mm. So it's very helpful. Uh, also, uh, at the beginning, both uh, material and non-material support of the Green Party was crucial because, well, the Greens at the beginning have nothing. They uh, have no place to meet, uh, have no money to uh, pr pr produce some uh, um, equipment for the strikes and so on. Uh, so, uh, also regarding the general know-how, how to rule, uh, how, how, how to organize the party. Yeah, because there were mostly people from social movements, so uh, they have no idea how to uh, well act together with people uh, who have different worldviews than theirs. Uh, because the Polish environmentalism mo movement also uh, is very fragmented, so uh, usually the idea when people have different opinion was to split. So. Uh, it, it was hard to learn how they can cooperate together uh, outside of these differences. Uh, so uh, it's, it's uh, some phrase uh, like a sofa party, uh, mm -hmm. meaning that uh, you know there there is so many so little number of people in the party that can um, just share a sofa and everybody will get a seat. Uh, so. There were sometimes uh, in the Greens history, uh, especially after their first defeats in the elections, uh, times when there were definitely just the Warsaw uh, and maybe Katowice, Gdańsk uh, party branch that were at all active. And now it definitely looks better, but uh, I, I was doing uh, well a regular surveys with green members and uh, the thing that they stated is something that they still uh, are in the party uh, is that uh, it's not that uh, green brand but uh, they believe that uh, it's worth it to fight for green ideas uh, it's uh, it has uh, pros and cons because uh, when you are so uh, ideologically attached to a party, uh, you are less uh, accepting of people with different uh, ideas uh, regarding this party, but it was something that helped them uh, survive for uh, well, since 2003 uh, without, well, they had some splits, but they didn't have the split that was threatening to the party. So no matter uh, how they are quarreling or how they are being defeated in election, they are still meeting uh, each other because, uh, well, it's still more like a movement. So the, more like a new social movement, like a group of friends uh, in big cities that they know each other, they're meeting at the same uh, demonstrations. Uh, so they're in, uh, all the time in contact, even before uh, the social media, uh, they were still in contact because uh, besides they were together in the party, they were together in the same group of friends. Okay, okay, that's interesting. Okay, um, we're kind of within sight of about half past two, which is our, our scheduled time to, to wind up. So I think we have time for me for one more question if anyone would like to to ask one. So I'm looking across the virtual the virtual room. Okay. Well there's, there's really one thing that occurs to me, but jump in folks in the audience if you'd if you'd like to, or we can have another question if you think of one, which is I mean this is really a really interesting discussion and it's been really great because it's about an hour and a half when I haven't thought about Vladimir Putin at all. Um, but obviously um, you know, there are huge changes going on. We may be burning more coal to, in order to burn less Russian gas. You, uh, your slide showed Polish Greens um, asking for refugees. I think this was from the uh, Belarusian crisis engineered by Alexander Lukashenko. Um, now, of course, Poland's made this remarkable effort to take in refugees from Ukraine, and, and it's not contentious. So. This is a kind of unfair question, I guess, but I think we're all kind of wondering it, which is, which is, 
can you see how the, uh, do you have any views about how the current crisis will a war really would change Polish politics um, and maybe sort of change the position of the liberal left or the political confrontation more um, more generally. Um, do you have any any thoughts about that? It's a, it's a difficult question because we obviously don't we don't don't know. But um, I just wondered if you had any thoughts. Oh. Yeah, it's difficult to answer, but uh, first, uh, I also thank you for this uh, opportunity not to think about Putin, because it's uh, definitely even harder not to think about Putin when the war is uh, a few hundred kilometers uh, fr from your place and there are your friends or their families in uh, in Ukraine that they cannot um, escape. So. Um, it's not that it's uh, not contentious, because uh, the government is trying to present uh, themselves as uh, well accommodating and benefiting, but most uh, definitely most of the work is done by uh, citizens uh, just activating in local groups, NGOs, and the local government. Uh, the government. Uh, I'm not sure what they are doing. They are, uh, besides sending some military uh, equipment to Ukraine, most of the even humanitarian transport are uh, organized by civil society NGOs and local governments. Uh, so. Uh, you may say that the government won't overtly say they are against immigrants from uh, against uh, refugees from Ukraine, but they are not doing uh, much to uh, help. Maybe it will change, and definitely uh, the thing that will change that uh, the pro-Russian sentiment will vanish from uh, Polish politics, uh, because, uh, mm, for example, uh, Prime Minister Morawiecki uh, of, of Poland uh, was. Um, uh yeah was very engaged uh, in talks with uh, the west european uh far right uh, uh, politicians who have uh, pro putin uh, sympathies uh, so maybe for a lot of years it will uh vanish from police politics because yeah there is no place to uh, go uh, yeah, even so, when uh, a few days ago Salvini w uh, came to Poland, uh, he went to Polish Ukrainian border, not sure for, but the president of Przemysl, uh, the town uh, close to the border, just uh, invited them, showing him the, his t shirt uh, with Putin that he was wearing uh, not far uh, ago. And uh, yeah, he was not very um, glad uh, this t shirt was uh, shown. So uh, perhaps not only from Polish politics, this uh, pro Russian uh, sympathies uh, will. Uh, expel. But regarding the party competition in Poland, uh, I'm not sure at the moment uh, how it will change because it uh, at the moment everybody's in uh, emergency mode. Yeah, mm. So people arrive, like over a million of people arrived in Poland in less than ten two weeks. So uh, they need to be accommodated because the majority of them stays in Poland. Uh, and uh, we have the housing problems uh, even before this war. So when this emergency mode, uh, I hope soon uh, we'll, st uh, we'll stop and uh, we will wait for the position on of law and justice government on, uh, well, Ukrainians uh, in relation to Polish citizens, because this government was quite nationalistic uh, before, especially in regard to migrants and refugees uh, from other cultures, representing different cultures, like from Syria that we, we could see, um, or generally from uh, African countries, uh, that we could see a very different treatment of people on uh, Ukrainian and Belarusian border. Also now uh, on Ukrainian border, people uh, of color reports that uh, there are, have some problems with representatives of Polish governments at the border. So uh, yes, it, it depends whether they uh, will incorporate them in their uh, quite nationalist notion of nation, 
uh, or they will expect uh, some uh, help from uh, European Union in order to continue supporting Ukrainians in Poland. So at the moment, they want the European Union to stop uh, to stop uh, putting charges against uh, violating the rule of law uh, as an exchange for mm -hmm. Poland uh, inviting refugees from Ukraine. So they want to have something uh, uh, as an exchange rather than as the um, char charitable position. Mm, okay, that's really interesting. I mean, obviously, we, we, we don't know what's coming down uh, the track for European or in national politics. Okay. Um, our time is basic. Well, no, we over, we've even overrun uh, by, by five minutes. Would anyone just like to come on with the last um, comment or uh, question at all? I'm just looking at you. Uh, well, I'll assume that you, you don't. And in that case, I will wind up the session. Well, can I thank you, Agnieszka, for your presentation and for fielding such you know, wide ranging uh, questions. It's been really, really fascinating. Um, and thank you also audience members, some of whom are very um, familiar faces, some of whom, uh, some of whom aren't. And I'll just formally bring the session to an end.